After having looked at the origin and current status of English in different Southeast Asian countries, in this unit we'll take a look at the future of English in Southeast Asia. There's a strong link between the influence that a language has on the other languages which are used with it and, the, and on the culture of the people who use the language and the political power or the political hegemony that the, the nation which owns the language enjoys. For example, in case of English, we see that um, Britain, um, the British Empire, because of its um, power and because of being a colonial, um, colonizing nation, was able to influence many countries in the world. And therefore, the language which was owned by the British Empire has had a lasting effect on um, on the the people who were once colonized or the countries which were once um, British colonies. Um, what happens in this case is even after the dominant nation loses its power or its influence decreases, the influence of the language is more long lasting and it continues long after the decrease in power of the dominant nation. And that's exactly what we see in case of English, um, that the the, the influence of English has continued uh, many years after the end of the uh, colonial rule of the British Empire. In different Southeast Asian countries, we see that the popularity and competence of English is now spreading to a wider community. So it's not now restricted to a particular class, but it is uh, English is being embraced by the wider community. Although since English is learned as a second language, mostly through education, um, in educational institutions, etc. And it is the rich who have uh, an access to better education opportunities. It is often the, the upper class in the Southeast Asian countries who are able to learn English with um, better competence uh, because of having um, more access to uh, education opportunities and also better better education opportunities not just education opportunities so we see that english seems to be a privilege of the rich as is the case in many other asian countries including pakistan and india that um, english has become the uh, a privilege of the rich and the upper classes so the degree and quality of attainment, um, meaning the the amount of English or um, how much English you're able to learn and how well you learn it depends on the quality of schooling, of course, um, which is uh, equally true of other contexts where English is learned as second language, Pakistan included, that if you go to a better school, you're able to learn English better. The availability of teaching and learning resources, of course, teaching learning, the better teaching learning resources are expensive and only the rich have access to better teaching learning resources. And similarly, um, a very important factor in uh, learning any second language, also English, is the amount of input you're able to receive in the language through international community, through tourism, foreign investment, schooling and employment abroad. And again, we see that it is usually the people of the upper class who have um, opportunities for getting engaged in these activities. Despite all this, despite uh, the rich having um, better um, having better opportunities for learning English in Southeast Asian countries, we see that the status and prestige of English is gradually increasing uh, among the masses as well. There is a um, very uh, noticeable increase in its use as a language of education. And um, there's also an increase uh, with this realization um, that an international language is no needed um, in this um, age of globalization. Uh, we see an increase in the spread of English in Southeast Asian countries as an international language, as a language of commerce, trade and international relations. 
so we see that in southeast asian countries there is a gradual increase in the prestige and use of english not only in a specific class but among the masses as well